Hi guys, this is Pradeep. So today I'm going to explain one more interview scenario. So this is related to our order to cash, but not exactly order to cash. I'm going to explain. This one is uh, you can see this PPT posting cost of goods sold at billing. That means as a traditional process, we know that whenever we are going to do the outbound delivery. So that time, I mean, sales order created. Then after that, we are doing the outbound delivery. So that time we are going to carry the cost or we are going to take the cost to our profitability analysis by crediting the FG stock. Now, just imagine, for example, in one period, we are going to do the outbound delivery and period close. Is it OK if we are going to post the cost of goods sold during the goods issue through the sales revenue posting? Or we can say that in one period, we are going to post the goods issue and the period closed. Then in next month, we are going to do the billing. So it is obvious we, uh, this type of situations will be there. So in one period, we are going to do the, if you follow the matching principle or if you are going to follow the standard process. So standard process is we are going to create sales order. Then after that, we are doing outbound delivery. Then we are doing the billing and then collection will be there. So I am assuming here that everything happened in the same month. So that's why immediately all the activities are done. But let's say in one period, we are doing the outbound delivery and in next period, we are going to do the billing. So in this situation, how we are going to do the accounting, right? So that is related to this question. So first of all, is it possible? Obviously, it is possible multiple times. This type of situation will be there when we have to capitalize our cost or we can say when we are doing the invoice, or billing that time we are going to debit the COGS account not at the time of outbound delivery so if you'll check this excel you can see let's say we are going to create the sales order then after that we are doing the outbound delivery and with reference to if we will follow the standard process so with reference to uh, outbound delivery so cost of goods sold is going to debit and FG stock is going to credit so this is the normal process we know very well then with billing as per the standard process, we are going to debit the customer and we are going to credit, our, uh, let's say some deductions are there, discounts are there, sales deduction, and we are going to have the sales credit. This is the normal process, but what I'm saying, this one, we are going to pick it here. Suppose, let's say, the cost of goods sold should be debit here because this one we are doing in one period and this one we are doing in another period. So let me highlight this in the red uh, yellow color, right? So cost of goods sold will be debited at the time of billing, not at the time of outbound delivery. So what we are going to do? User point of view, there will be no difference. So user will perform the normal activities as it is, but in the books of accounts, we are going to do such a things or in books of accounts that instead of this account, the debit will be there at the time of billing. But as outbound delivery, we are going to perform. So some accounting entries will be there. So we will see what is that accounting entries. So I will explain the accounting entry. Let's do one thing. Let's create one sales order and we will uh, then uh, I will pro process the outbound delivery and uh, after that billing. Of course, all these activities I'm going to do today in one period. But you assume that these two activities in one period and this one in another period right so accounting point of view there will be some difference will be there but only thing is the period will be closed and next period you are going to post so uh, let's get uh, into the sap system in and this is applicable in both ecc as well as s4 although i am using here the s4 system but this one is applicable both in ecc and s4 now to understand this practical example uh, let's create one sales order then we will do one outbound delivery, then we will do the billing and we will see how it is deviated from our standard process. So let me create one sales order. User point of view, there is no difference. So I will take here as usual VA01. So this is my order type standard, sales organization, distribution channel and division, sold to party. So let's take something here. Then for reference, I will take something here. Customer reference. So this is my finished stock and let's take one for easy understanding item.
Right, so there is no issue with incompletion log. Now we will check whether my all the conditions are updated or not. So it is perfectly updated, my revenue updated, my sales reduction will be there. So that is output tax and cost will be there, 36678 and this cost will be transferred to profitability analysis when we will transfer the, uh, when we will do the billing, not on the normal process. So save it. So order created, order number 57. Now with reference to order 57, I'm going to process the outbound delivery. And there we will see the difference. So with reference to order 57, I'm going to process the outbound delivery. and post goods issue. Now here uh, we got the outbound delivery document eight, uh, 5 times 0, 3, 9, that is my delivery document and material document 4, 9, 5 times 0, 1, 3, 4. Now let's check the accounting document. Now I'm assuming that the goods are still in the transit. That means customer had not received the goods. So that's why there is no scope for billing this month. So period is going to close. And in this case, instead of going to debit the cost the cogs account rather we are going to use some different account let's check that account so this is my outbound delivery document or material uh, delivery note then material document and check the accounting document 49019 so first let's see what type of document it is. So it is our outbound delivery. You can see WL document type, which is your goods issue. And with reference to this, check the accounting entry. Now this accounting entry is not your traditional accounting entry where we are going to credit the FG stock and we are going to debit the COGS account. Rather here we are crediting FG stock of course, but we are debiting the goods in transit account. So it's not a traditional account, it is goods in transit account. So instead of we replaced here or automatically, all these things are happened automatically. So uh, automatically system replaced here the COGS account instead of COGS account system used here goods in transit account. You can name this account anything. I have just named this account as goods in transit. You can take any other name also, but purpose is we are not going to debit here the COGS account. Right, so COGS account is going to debit once we are going to do the billing. Now here for reference, let's capture it. Next I'm going to do the billing. So with reference to the billing uh, delivery note, I'm going to do the billing. Now check the billing document and check the accounting entry. Now here you can see two accounting documents are generated because here also I have configured the COG splitting which is a different concept in our margin analysis uh, uh, the, where we are going to split our COGS account into multiple individual components. I already prepared video on that. You can check that. Uh, let's check this accounting document. Now here the change you can see this accounting so if it is a normal billing first of all let's check it is what type of document so it is a billing document rv if it is a normal billing document then you will find that your customer debited your revenue credited your sales deduction debited and your tax component credit up to this but here you can see some more additional entries are there the last entry where we have debited our goods in transit account so goods in transit account was debited 81 it is cost so if you check your posting key you will find it is cost so your 81 which is your cost uh, goods in transit account was debited now that goods in transit account credited so account balance zero and the balance we transferred to finally to cogs account so what is the and this one assume that we are performing in the next month so once we are going to do the billing or customer accepted the goods so that time we are going to do the billing and along with billing we have also captured the cost so here we transfer the revenue plus 
uh, we transfer the cost so if you follow the standard pra practice then standard practice with outbound delivery we are capturing a cost and we are transferring but if a different period will be there billing and outbound delivery then this will be there so coming to my question initially which i asked that in interview if question is that is it possible can we transfer the cost with reference to billing instead of outbound delivery yes it is possible and this is the result so in this case we are transferring the cost with billing not at the time of outbound delivery right so it is possible so you try this one in the system then uh, you will get more clarity and if you want to see the other document which is related to cog splitting so here i debited it's a different concept uh, depends on this configuration it's not mandatory in this scenario but as it is i configured so that's why uh, cogs account is debit 36678 and same cost i splitted here so cogs account credited and this one individual amounts are debited these are my cost components so when we will prepare our income statement so instead of cogs account we will take the individual components so try this one in the system if any question let me know thank you